Welcome and good morning to in the, our today's devotional, God's Word for Today. And we will read today our text in the book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 30 to 35. So when they were sent off, they went down to Anchok, and having gathered the congregation together, they delivered the letter. And when they had read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. And Judas and Silas, who were themselves prophets, encouraged and strengthened the brothers with many words. And after they had spent some time, they were sent off in peace by the brothers to those who had sent them. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. What an encouragement that the team from Jerusalem, represented by Paul, together with Barnabas and Silas and Judas, they brought the letter in order to encourage the brethren in Antioch and encouragement. And that's our purpose here in our devotional, daily devotional, God's Word for today. For we know that we need encouragement day by day through the Word. There is no other way and source of encouragement except the Word of God. Uh, we are not here advocating the wisdom of men and the wisdom of the world, but we want to be encouraged by the Word of God, for the Word of God is the man of our soul. It is the strength and and uh, the, the food that can give us strength for the rest of the day. So here, we see that after they arrived in Antioch, after the Jer Jerusalem Council met and resolved and brought this letter. They went to Antioch and then when they arrived there, they gathered the congregation and delivered the letter to them. And when the Christians or the believers at Antioch read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. I hope that we, we will be a people, we will be believers who think of how we can encourage one another. Interestingly, this group um, came into or came to Antioch in order to encourage the believers because there was a group earlier, there were Jews who were unauthorized, who went earlier and discouraged the Christians there by their teaching. Their teaching says that you cannot be saved by believing on Jesus alone, but you have to do and practice the Mosaic law by circumcising your, your children, or you have to undergo also the rituals of circumcision, like the Jews. So that was what confused the people or the believers in Antioch. But in contrast, Judas and Silas, they were the official representatives of Jerusalem. They went bringing with them the letter that encouraged the brethren there. The letter itself, read, presented to them, could have been enough to encourage them. The letter itself was an encouragement to them. But the church of Jerusalem as decided by the elders and the apostles, deemed it fit to send representatives in the persons of Judas and Silas. Why? I believe that it is because personal presence will make a difference. Isn't it? If we just receive a letter from a person writing good thoughts and, and wonderful thoughts about us, encouraging us, it would be different if they will come in person and say those words to us. The writer of Hebrews had exhorted us that physical gathering wherein we can build one another, exhort one another in person, matters so much. 
he said, the writer of Hebrews said in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25, I think if you are a Christian for quite a while, you know these verses. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So this is my prayer and desire, and even my pleading for us as believers. Don't neglect to gather together in person. Yes, you can attend fellowship via Zoom, by social media, but that should not be the, um, shall I say, uh, your fulfillment when it is not possible for you to attend and be there physically because of some restrictions, because of some reasons that are valid. I think social media like Zoom and Facebook might be sufficient, might be good enough rather than having nothing. But because right now, the restrictions are is a little bit. We can gather together. We can, can sing and do ministry without masks anymore. I don't think we should make it a reason not to gather physically if it's possible, unless your situation does not warrant it. Let's not neglect the gathering together in person because it matters. As the Haredi of Hebrews says here, exhorting one another because the day, what is this day that is drawing near? Perhaps in the context of the Hebrews, they were persecuted, the day of hardship, or it would be the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ when they will not have opportunity anymore to gather together. But the point of the writer is this. It's important to exhort one another, to provoke one another, and to love and to good works by our physical meeting. Just like what Judas and Silas did by going to Antioch in order to encourage the brethren there. So Judas and Silas spent with them for some time. They were prophets themselves. So they encouraged and strengthened their brothers with many words as they received from the Lord being prophets. Like them, we must use our gifts to edify, edify others. Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 to 11, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Each of us at least had one gift. Some of us had many gifts, but those gifts are intended to be used in order to edify the brothers, to edify the church. But whether we have the gift of prophecy or not, like Judas and Silas, Paul had admonished us to encourage one another by, by using God's words or by filling our hearts with God's word. This is what he said in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. This is not only for those who are gifted by the word of prophecy, but for all of us. We should be filled with the word of God, with all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in our hearts to God. So this is what I believe. If you and I are word-filled Christians, we will be an encourager. Let us be word-filled Christian. Let us hide the word of God in our hearts so that we will become an encourager. Because the Holy Spirit will use the word of God in order that we'll be able to minister to others by the words that we will say to them. And these words are coming from the promptings of the Holy Spirit from the words of God that we have in our hearts. Now, Paul later had emphasized the importance of the ministry of the word when he wrote or when he gathered together the elders at 
of, of Ephesus before he left towards Jerusalem. So he gathered these elders in order to warn them that there will be many false teachers who will disrupt and destroy the flock at Ephesus. So this is what he warned them because what happened to the church at Antioch might repeat in the church at Ephesus because false teachers are everywhere. So this is what he said to the elders of Ephesus. Acts chapter 20, verse 24 to 29. I know that after my departure, first wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. So Paul anticipated that there will be many false teachers wolves in sheep clothing and coming and rising even from among them who will destroy and and disparage the disciples. Let me continue reading. Therefore, he said, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. The rise of the false teachers is in inevitable. We cannot prevent it. Into this world, there are myriads of religion, so many of them. We, we have seen that rise lately that it's just crazy. We hear it from the social media and, and, and YouTube. However, we might not be able to control the rise of the false teachers, but we have the truth, the word of God. We have the Holy Spirit who will use the word of God that will be able to guard ourselves from the influence of these false teachers. Let's encourage one another with the words of God. The scriptures are is, is the gift of God to us, and we must use this in allow the Holy Spirit to use this, using our lives, ordinary lives, that we can encourage one another. For it is only the scripture that can build us up. As what Paul said here in Acts 20, verse 24, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace the scriptures, which is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Maybe that we will have more ministries that are word-filled, churches that are word-filled in order that we'll become strong, that no matter what the devil will do through the false teachers, its believer, the flock, is encouraged. He can only capitalize on Christians who are not encouraged. When they are discouraged, when they are disparaged, then the flock becomes vulnerable. May we we'll be able to encourage one another through the word of God. May you are encouraged through our devotional God's word for today, even this morning. Let us pray. Father, thank you that we are one here by the experiences of the churches in, in, in the early times of Christian history, the church in Antioch, the church in Jerusalem, and even in Ephesus. And we know that the devil is still the same adversary, accuser, who will use um, everything, Lord, in order to discourage the believers. The thank you that your word is eternal. Your word is powerful. It is sharper than any two it is short. I, I thank you because we can hide the word of God in our hearts. And we will be able to admonish one another in psalms and hymn, hymns and spiritual songs and encourage one another. Like what Judas and Silas and the team had done to the church at Antioch. Bless this to our hearts today, Lord, not only for today, but even 
for the rest of our lives as we continue to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.